Hey, hey, people. Seth here. Ask yourself this question. Why do people hate on the shonen protagonist? On self-improvement in general? Acting as if self-actualization and personal growth are just schemes designed to make you leave your mother's basement. Well, I have a newsflash for you. All the stuff you thought was cool as f at 12 still is. Large men screaming and punching each other to the tune of poorly compressed power metal is the peak of literature. For was it not written in Leviticus 1822? If one is born a man, at least once in this life, he will dream of being the strongest man alive. So let me take you on a little cruise and I'll show you what you've been missing out on. Bastard Bonds takes the award for especially if you use Discord overlay. It's been subtle, but none of my homies turn their backsides to me anymore. In fear. <laughs> What others may see as ein Videospiele, dripping in sweat and homoeroticism, is actually a fairly deep and well-crafted RPG. The game setting is loosely based on the country of Australia, full of sodomites, murderers, and people who engage in a uh, character development. There's also a great variety of creatures from every mythos imaginable, from otters to bears to people who watch JoJo. Ever since I found out uh, HelloFresh is using monkey labor to uh, collect coconut milk, I have never been more excited excited to do a HelloFresh sponsorship. Hit me up. I am the only pro monkey slave trade creator on this platform. I will make you so proud. You have no idea. Unfortunately, they are no longer responding to my emails, so I have to settle for a much higher quality sponsor instead. Listen, I am literally paid to distract you from important issues so my masters can better control you while you dance for bread and circus. Of course I endorse everything I say. <laughs> As my rabbi always used to say, eh, let's get this over with. It's about five percent off at top you're not gonna remember <laughs> just like a young man locked in a froze of passion with a certified bbw from a project narrowly avoids fatherhood established titles have pulled out from this sponsorship. Let's make this very clear. Every sponsorship I ever take is a complete work of fiction. Let the words pass through you and go about your life. I'm just here to bleed corporations dry. Do not believe a single thing I say. Before I continue, there's a button in the options menu, which, if I ever click, gets me instantly demonetized. You begin as a newly incarcerated inmate in the most meticulous and detailed clothing system I've ever seen in a game. I know, I was surprised too when I learned the target demographic of this game. Then you get to the fun part, your prison sentence, in which you get to pick your favorite crime. There's nearly 30 options, but unfortunately, you can't multi-class. What do these decide? Does the game ever tell you? Nope. So in the spirit of fairness, I won't either. Then you either confess or deny your guilt. This will affect your character's alignment. And then the game begins. Hey. And based on a number of factors I don't have time to explain, you get your first party member. Lawful characters get a parole officer. Sex criminals get a fellow reprobate to tag along with. And uh, mixed race couples get bailed out by their seven foot tall orc GF. Of all the backgrounds, necromancy still haunts me to this day. Because one of my favorite characters, yeah, he tries to free you, gets his neck snapped by an inmate, and uh, how do you you reward this act of compassion, you resurrect his lifeless corpse to serve you for the rest of the game. Now's a good time to explain character stats. The system stretches wide and deep. Columns are your stereotypical archetypes. Top, bottom, uh, fuck. Top, bottom, and switch. Rows are your proficiencies. Giving, receiving, and jelking. It's fairly straightforward once you get the hang of it. Anytime you put a point into a stat, everything in the same row and column receive some of a runoff. There is no traditional class or gender role. Essentially, everything is running off the same rules as you, and you always have the ability to respec. So experimentation is not only encouraged, it's mandatory. Once you get past a quick tutorial, you are thrust into the main map. You'll notice two things once you get to the open world. The world is very open, and you have nowhere to lift. This game follows the Lord of the Locker Room 4th edition rule set, which states if you beat the absolute shit out of everyone on the map, you can invoke squatter rights and claim it as your gym of operations. But who's gonna staff this hunk dungeon? I'm glad you asked. The game has a sizable bestiary, and as long as you've got bench space in your stronghold, you can recruit nearly every creature in this game. Hulking giants, strapping centaurs, bear tigers, even women. They all respond to the same style of friendship I used in primary school. I threw a rock at their head, and uh, we both got detention. Similarly, you assert your dominance, and after a brief struggle snuggle, the enemy might hesitate. You can then ask them for two things, your money or your cummy. <laughs> I'd just like to say thank you to established titles for sponsoring this video. 
Sending them to the coal mines increases your manpower, which dictates how large of a gym you can currently run. Also, holding a thug for ransom is uh, literally your bread and butter. It's uh, how you earn money. Listen, this is a prison island. We are not good people. Much like everything else, this game tells you absolutely nothing about a monster until you actually recruit it. Not even its actual HP. Guess. So, you're gonna have to tiptoe the fine line of all alcoholic fathers. Beat them just enough to listen, but not enough to summon child protection of services. We're looking for creatures with a particular skill, command. There are several in the game, the earliest of which will be a hag. After you've whined and dined on Primo Grossi, you now have the best recruiter in the entire game. That's because command allows you to understand anything or anyone, regardless of language or intelligence. Think of an amulet of monkey speak from RuneScape, but instead we use it to convince slime girls to uh, let us hot dog their gelatin and join our ranks. Giant Golem blocking a vault? Now he's my personal personal valet. Dragon, ruling his cave? Now he's my personal sriracha dispenser. Horrific abomination composed of nothing but limbs, eyes, and genitalia? Yeah, that's Gary. He runs the soup kitchen. If you can beat something into a pulp, you can make it part of a team. As Machiavelli famously said, it is better to beat off a minotaur than to be beaten by the minotaur. Anyway, now you have a full commission list of fur affinity tags rolling with a squad. How does that help our gains? Well, every member of your band contributes manpower. This is the statistic you need to acquire more Lebensraum, if you will. Generally, if someone's good at murder, they're terrible at housework. Look, somebody has to wipe down after the unspeakable happens, so you're gonna need some indentured servants. Which is still okay to say on YouTube, because the Irish are not yet recognized as part of a human race. And to quote Albert Einstein, even if they were, the only thing they're racing towards is the finish line. Throughout the island, you'll find many extravagant locals. There's a fairly common recurring enemy. They're called Thralls. Essentially, unpaid interns, but for life. So, you basically go into a World Economic Forum hideout, beat the shit out of every hedge fund manager, and then, when thralls are the only thing left, you tell them you aren't free so much as under new management. Since areas scale to your level, which isn't the default option, and please, for the sake of your homies' glutes, change level progression to leader instead of band. Because those levels scale with your leader, recruiting a fresh batch of serfs every now and then will keep your bases expanding fast with the least amount of grind possible. So, you got a bunch of bad bitches, your girl bossing it up. What's the point of this game? Well, in a complete subversion of traditional JRPGs, your primary objective and the last thing you do is uh, get a boat and get the fuck off this island. You're left to figure out for yourself how you plan to do that. The world map is completely open and can be approached from many directions with many interesting and varied locations. From serene forests with soothing music to brothels to bathhouses, to a Silent Hill horror sequence, to literal giant anuses used for fast travel. Or, as I like to call them, one developer's poorly disguised fetish. There's a lot of unique characters, events, side quests, and lore to keep you entertained. As you slowly realize, this island isn't just a prison for its inmates, it's a tomb for your jailers as well. We can enter, but someone or something has its tendrils around our collective chodes, and we cannot leave. Combat. Combat is quick and snappy and about as deep as a puddle. As everybody works off your rules, you'll catch on how it works pretty quickly. Mainly, combat is a dance between two options. Take an action or hold shift and take risk. It's a delicate balance of risk versus reward. Essentially, you're going to be the caboose of any train if you don't go balls out as often as possible. Risk lets you make multiple moves by the same character on the same turn, but each time you do, there's a higher chance of punishment. Each time your risk meter overloads, you instantly fail your move and are left in a state I refer to as submissive and breedable. So you can choose to either minimize your risk, play it safe, or push your luck as deep as it goes. My personal team build consists of a daddy dom, a power bottom, a service top, and an ally. There's a lot of customization and options. Beating someone to death with a legendary multi-hit bow is just as viable as shooting it. As your enemies scale up in late game, many fights boil down to the equivalent of uh, getting jumped in between classes, something I'm all too familiar with. Some bullies will pull up, hold your friend down as they slap the books out of his hands, and uh, proceed to beg for their lives as you reach into your backpack. This game's systems are occult and esoteric. I encountered many soft locks, exploits, and glitching AI. Some might call this organic. You know what else is organic? Brain tumors. I've now had two people play through the entire game without a single gay encounter, which, uh, I mean, I'm not complaining, I just feel a little cheated 
that's all. There's something I should clarify before we pull out the crusty socks. This game has a certain stigma behind it. As the funny gay sex Baldur's Gate. In fact, the gay sex is hidden behind something called romance. You actually have to form a connection with someone, learn their feelings and aspirations, and become closer to them in both body and soul. Then, after years of camaraderie, you confess your feelings for each other, and what do you get? A few nice words and a friendship bracelet. So, yes, you'll probably have to play with two guides open, and you'll have to figure out the rest by trial and error. However, with a little bit of effort and determination, you'll find a game that's worth the jokes and concern expressed by your friends for playing it. In closing, Bastard Bonds is a game with a lot of heart. In a body builder community, heart is very important. You know, everyone always focuses on abs and cum gutters, the ability to submit an Astolfo cosplayer at a glance, but they often overlook cardio. Looking like a character out of Baki might get you a lot of attention, but a good heart, both physically and metaphorically, will do you much better in the long run. So, why did I cover this? Well, primarily to humiliate the sponsor, but uh, no, I did have a reason. Maybe in our fear and stigmatization of homosexuality, we as men have lost some thing in the process. The ability to stand up and proclaim our love for one another as friends and comrades. We're so scared of how we appear, we've reduced ourselves to emotionally stunted husks. Look, I'm not here to preach, but uh, maybe if each of us told another homie that we genuinely care about them, maybe we would not be half as depressed and pathological as we are right now. It's easy to forget yourself. I've been there many times, and, and each time the pit is just as empty and bottomless as it was before. In my paralysis, it is only because of the people closest to me that I remind myself I can climb out of it. Anyway, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, look after each other, because it makes the pain of this world, life, and existence just a little bit more bearable. As always, more content to come next year. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful. Thank you for your continued faith and support and have a good one. Epilogue. This is not the main part of the video, but if you're currently gooning, you may continue to do so. Due to time constraints, because originally sponsors wanted this on the 10th, I got help for this video. I'm proud to say I've assembled a small team. I have employed an ex-felon and a crack yes. addict to work for me. We have our own Scooby-Doo mystery machine, but instead of solving mysteries, we make people disappear. Now, uh, watch this. Editor, please insert the animated gif of the obese woman crushing a platoon of army men with her stomach, with a caption, thank you for your service. Thank you. Please leave that on. I love smoking Janko. By selling out, I have bought my freedom. I don't have a concise explanation for the psychological reasoning behind this. Just know that I fought long and hard about this, many nights, and considered my options between the fleeting temporary relevance to and adoration of porn-addicted males on the internet, or money. And unfortunately, I chose the cash. Also, ever since people found out that our scam sponsor is a scam based out of Hong Kong, it is unlikely we're ever going to see that money. Which is a shame, because it's a really good advert. In fact, uh, let me show you. Hey gang, you know what's a pretty fun concept? Feudalism. Back when times were simple and men even simpler. We all sort of agreed that whoever had the most land must have something going on. Nowadays, the people who own the most land are called investment firms. Back in the day, however, they were called lords or ladies. Look, I'm gonna level with you. Society is heading towards a collapse one way or another. And uh, between you and me, I feel our chances are better with neo-feudalism than a budget Amazon Prime version of Brave New World. That's why I teamed up with established titles for this video. The hip new way to integrate class warfare while also preserving nature in Scotland and helping reforestation efforts globally. It's based on the historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds, or lords and ladies in English. Full disclosure right off the bat, the title they give you, uh, honorary at best, a conversation starter at most, technically bequeathing you no land, no wenches. However, you can use it for all your status adjacent documents, credit cards, dating profiles, plane tickets, you name it. It makes for a great last minute gift. <laughs> Now, what it does, however, establish is that you are different. What made a lord back in the day? A divine mandate? The will of God? No. It was one guy who convinced a bunch of dirt farmers that, hey, you know what? If we have more dirt, we could probably get more bitches. That's right. I'm telling you that this title is the first step. A step towards establishing a dream. Our dream. 
Well, my dream, that men will control their own destiny. That's right, the first 200 people to sign up will be next to my land plot. We'll start small, 200 people, which sounds like nothing. But fun fact, did you know that there's at least 15 countries with absolutely no army? Also, the standing military force of Iceland is like uh, 200 people. They have four planes and uh, four ships. What I'm saying is, we have options. Okay, now I feel like I might be losing some of you. You like trees, right? They're cool, right? They make air. Catch wayward drunk drivers in their warm embrace. And some of them don't even look half bad. Established Titles works with the charities One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation. So, on top of seizing your own destiny, you can say, hey, I helped plant a tree. When they ask where, you say, that's the fun part, it could be anywhere. So, what do you actually get in return for your hard-earned dollar? Warm feelings are nice and all, uh, I need a receipt. You'll receive an official printed title with a unique plot number. Where, might you ask? A preserve in Eddleton, Scotland, with any name you wish to canonize as a lord or lady. You know, some men need a push in the right direction. You think someone like Kim Jong-un wanted to be in charge? Of course not. He would rather be playing Genshin Impact and grooming kittens online. Greatness waits for no man, which is why it's time to start your legacy today. With Christmas just around the corner, they're running a Christmas special. Follow my link or use code SEF10 at checkout for an extra 10% off. Think about it. What better gift can you give a king than a crown? And with that, I bid you all farewell. I cannot wait to see the man-made horrors that await us for 2023. Remember, it's not a dystopia if you're living in one. <laughs>